a very warm welcome to uh, day five of the Atal FDP on research advances and real time applications in artificial intelligence, which began on the 25th of October. And uh, today is the fifth day of the FDP, 29th October 2021. Uh, this day uh, would be a very action packed day as uh, we would be listening to two eminent speakers and uh, the afternoon session, we would have the assessment followed by the valedictory and feedback session. Today amongst us, we have the guest speaker from NIT Barangal. Sir is Dr. Ramalinga Swami Cheruku, Assistant Professor at NIT Barangal Telangana, who has an experience of five years in teaching and has industry experience of over two years. Sir is currently guiding two research scholars and has published over 20 uh, publications in journals, uh, 13 in conference, and has written one book and three book chapters. The areas of interest that Sir uh, does his research are soft computing, deep learning, machine learning, artificial neural networks, data mining, optimization, wireless sensor networks, and big data. Today, we welcome Sir here for the talk, and the session that Sir is going to develop, uh, deliver will be on meta heuristics for classification rule mining. I welcome all the participants and I hand over the session to Dr. Ramalinga Swami, sir. Sir, welcome once again and thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanvir. Uh, so, very good morning, all. And the, today I'm going to discuss about um, the classification rule mining. Okay. So, maybe you are aware of the, by this time, you are already familiar with the, with the classification. And what is the clustering and all the stuff and the regression and all so so far we know that the classification as happens when you train a model whether it's a neural network model or maybe basically any classifier if you take it so what you are going to do we are given as input your data and you are getting as output so what is going inside what is happening inside that black box you can say treat as a black box we don't know okay so let us try to open this box. Okay, let, today I'm trying to do that. Let what will be there if I open that box? So that's all about the classification rule. Okay, if you are able to see the knowledge, the knowledge representation in the form of the the rules. Okay, that's nothing but the opening of your the block box. Okay, so today I morely emphasize that, and we will begin our session with the, what is the rule mining. So what is the advantage of this classification uh, uh, rule based techniques over the traditional techniques? non-rule based techniques we will start our discussion with that then we will move on to the so what is the role of this meta heuristic as form intelligence how can we make use of this form intelligence for the classification okay so i will discuss two or three research paper based on that okay I hope you are able to see my screen and my voice is audible. So, if... yes. So, I'm writing on my whiteboard and uh, if it is not visible to you, please let me know. Okay. So, so far we know the, how the classification will take place. So I'm not discussing about the classification in that. So, how the classification is different from the regression? Can anybody? So, both are a supervised approaches, supervised learning models. How the regression is different from the classification? Why it is called supervised models? Any idea? Okay. Suppose I am developing either a classification or regression model. So what I'm trying to do, so I'm so I'm given my data set as input and you are trying to get some output from this 
So during this, what you are doing, you are training this model. You will train this model. And once you get a trained model, you will acquire some knowledge. So where is this knowledge? How do you say this knowledge? This knowledge is invisible to you. You cannot interpret this knowledge. So during the training process, when you are training a classifier, especially I'm talking about artificial neural network based classifier, MLFFN, MLPN and all this stuff, a PNN or RBF and whatever you name, even CNN also. So when you train a model with the help of data set, so it will acquire some knowledge by making use of the training algorithm is a back propagation is a gradient based or stochastic gradient there's so many variety of the training algorithms are there to speed up your training process so what is the purpose of this training is to make your model to learn or to make your classifier to learn from the data so or the iterations when you're trying to model, when you're trying to incorporate, when you're trying to train your model, so over the iteration, your model will, will learn something from the data. So that is called knowledge or hidden patterns. So if we cannot see this data, if in the case of ANNs, artificial neural networks, so this knowledge will be represented in the form of the weights. If you observe the weight matrix, something 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 2, something. This is a weight matrix of your model. By looking at this, can you interpret anything? Nothing. So in this perspective, we can say that so this kind of the classifiers, uh, like AN and especially AN and based classifiers, when you called a block box I can say that black box so if I try to open this box I want to see the knowledge But opening the box, opening the black box. So, so this is the area we are talking is called when you try to open the box, when you want to interpret the knowledge, this can accomplish with the help of the rule based classifiers. I understood right the essence of this rule based classifiers is to bring more interpretability into your system so the knowledge is more interpretable now you can see the knowledge by looking at the rules so in element terminology so in a in a high level we can say that in a rule based classifier by looking the self explanatory we can say that there are set of rules Obviously, there are set of sorry. So there will be set of rules, right? So there is a set of rules. So the question is how to get these rules? to get how to generate these rules from the data set or data this is called a rule generation 
some people also called rule mining task yes so we can generate the rules okay, the traditional approaches like uh, how can we generate by looking at decision tree approaches and also we can make by using swarm intelligence or meta heuristics the reason for uh, using the meta heuristic over here is that so we can pose this rule generation as an NPR problem it's an NPR problem we will discuss So in the literacy, it's already proved that for NPR problem, if you want to get a near optimal solution in a reasonable time, so ideally we will use the meta heuristic approaches. Right. So first we will discuss the decision tree based approaches for rule generation. So in the decision tree based approaches, what we are trying to do is you are trying to constitute a decision tree you're trying to constitute a tree like data structure so from this tree you can generate the rules so what are the typical properties of this tree in the tree the properties of this tree is leaf nodes are classes and internal nodes are the features so the stream will have certain leaf nodes and this leaf node should be have some class information now if i know that for the simplicity purpose you have taken that this is a positive class this is a negative class this is a positive this is a positive class so this node is representing positive class 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 and internal node something this f1 this is f3 and this is f2 features so how can i generate the rule the rule can be generated by traversing from the root to the leaf this is one rule let it be r1 the other rule is r2 the other rule is r3 the other one is r4 the totally four rules r1 r2 r3 and r4 how can i generate a rule if f1 is equal to something and f f3 is equal to something then class is equal to leaf nodes class is equal to past that's a diabetes positive the leaf node part will be in the consequent part and it is an antecedent part the internal nodes will have part will constitute the antecedent part of your if your rule and the leaf node will be your consequent part of the rule or it's the then part now you tell me how many number of rules i can generate from looking at this decision tree number of rules can any area number of rules guys how many number of rules we can generate? Hmm? How many number of rules I can generate? The number of rules I can generate is equal to the number of leaf nodes, isn't it? You see. There are four leaf nodes, one, two, three, four. Hence, you have a 
R1, R2, R3, R4. So the number of rules you can generate is equal to the number of leaf nodes. Yeah, it's well and good. If you have a decision tree, now you can traversing from the root to the, the leaf node, you can generate the rule. And number of such rules will be equal to the number of leaf nodes. Right. And the question is how to generate this tree? How to generate? Okay. Uh, let me discuss in high level view, then we will go in detail. Okay. High level view. So first you have to do you have to split your data set into training and testing part. Okay. Then what you have to do, you take training data set. And now this is a training data set. This is a data set, so training data set. You know data set means training only, okay. So then you try to split this data set. You try to split. And you have to split the recursively, okay? Then you have to for simplicity purpose, I am taking every time there are two splits now, okay. And I see there is no leaf sets, okay. Now, how long I have to repeat this process? And every time I'm taking the data set, I'm splitting based on some condition and the feature, or feature condition. And so once you've done the splitting on its sub parts, on the partition parts, you will do this process recursively. So you have to repeat the same process. You have to choose carefully, select the best split. You have to find the best split and the best split you have to make use and you have to split your data set. So this process you have to repeat. How long you have to repeat it? The question arises. Till, till your partition, till your partition will have the same class information. Suppose at the last, uh, all the samples in this will have a positive class, positive class, positive class, positive class. Till you have a node in which you have a all the tuples, all the data samples should have same class information. Means the class label of all the samples should be same. Right. If that is the case, suppose by luckily, if you if I'm having all the sample are in a positive class, I can say that this is a positive class node. This is a leaf node, there is no further splitting. Now, similarly, it is having all negative class information. I can say it is a negative class node. Similarly, something is a positive class and this is a negative class and this is a negative class. If you look at the leaf nodes, one, two, three, this is also four, maybe it is negative, I have written five and six. So all this is a leaf nodes. If you observe the tuples, it will belong to the same class, either a positive class or negative class. Right. Then, see, it's sometimes it is very difficult to scan all the samples uh, to check whether uh, belongs to the same class or they are having uh, different class information. So for that we have used, we will use some measures. Suppose I am taking, I am taking entropy. We will discuss later what is entropy. There are some measures that will tell you that whether your partition is pure or homogeneous or whether the purity of your partition.
this entropy will measure the purity of the partition the purity is 100% it means that the, all the samples will belong to the same class so this will infer this will provide some sort of measure quantifying measure at what extent the, the purity is there if 100% purity is there we can say that the all the class all the sample belongs to the same class that is my purity or homogeneity see what we are trying to do here we are trying we are taking the data set and we are keep on partitioning until we reach the leaf uh, nodes in which the purity is more means all the samples are the same class so that data set that partition we are treating as a leaf node the leaf node because there is no further splittings right so like this we can uh, do the splittings the question is how to identify the best split as i mentioned how to identify the best split and uh, the question arises how do we choose how do we measure purity of node purity of splitting if you know the purity of the splitting the which the, the splitting which gives more pure so that is the best split so for that you have to know how to measure the purity of splitting any doubts here are you able to follow i mean any doubts so far guys suppose so there are three such measures uh, of course not only three for the discussion i have taken only three is gini index and other one is uh, entropy based measure called uh, the gain information gain and gain ratio so there are three performance measures uh, that will measure the the purity of your what you call the purity of your node are uh, the that will help us to identify the best split okay suppose if the data set grows exponentially if this data set is large if the training data set is large and this whole process will be a tedious this whole process of generating a tree the whole process is a tedious it's very hard to solve by computer it takes so much of computational resources right so what is the alternative for this how can you overcome this the data set is large it does involve so many computations of every time you have to find if you choose a gene index every time you have to find out the best uh, the one which is giving the maximum gene value so we are, we are intended to uh, get the best split based on gene index you have to compute the gene computations and also so we'll see what is the gene index formula and all so in a in a nutshell if i am putting it together so the essence of uh, for these meta heuristics will come into the pictures now because when the training data size is large when i'm using the large data sets and applying these kind of traditional techniques based on the gene index and gain and gain ratio or some misclassification error to generate this tree is a tedious and time consuming so what is the alternative so the alternative is meta heuristics so these meta heuristics will choose the search strategy 
the clever search strategy. So this meta heuristic will use the different kind of search strategies for the looking of the search solution for searching of the solutions and uh, maybe we may not get the optimal solution we may not get the optimal or a best solution for that but we may end up getting near optimal or close to the best solution so what is the advantage uh, what is the advantage of this suppose there is a conventional technique and there is a meta heuristic technique is there. In the conventional technique to solve a particular problem, it takes more time. It takes very, very less time. But on the other hand, in the conventional technique, the solution, optimal solution, that means the best solution for the problem, the optimal solution is guaranteed. Here, you do, we cannot guarantee optimal solution, the best solution, but you can get near optimal solution. So what is mean by near optimal solution? The solution which is very close to your actual solution. Suppose I'm an example I'm telling. There is f of x is equal to x square. So in the range x belongs to 0 to 2, 2, what is the maximum value of max of f of x? I want to give it to the computer. I want to give it to the computer. I want to solve. I ask my computer what is the maximum value of my function f of x in the range 0, 2. The function is f of x is equal to x square. Of course, it's very simple, but how the computer does. Suppose if I'm using the traditional approach or uh, so called some traditional optimization techniques like linear probing and Newton Ramsey method, all this stuff. If I'm using conventional approach, suppose I'm getting the solution in two hours. But the solution is x is equal to two. If I'm using meta heuristics, So the solution may be in two minutes and the solution can be it is 1.92 something like this x is equal to me. if you see the solution is very close to the actual solution but thus to obtain this solution we require very less amount of time like nearly two minutes and where in this case taking more time yes two hours is very less but suppose if you're taking Suppose 20 days or 30 days of time to get some, some larger problem. So I don't have that much time to wait. But if I use the meta heuristic approach or this form intelligence or this sub computing approaches, so you can figure the solution at very fast, but the solution you have to compromise a little bit. Okay, so that's the reason we will use uh, where we want to deal with very uh, complex problems. We will always prefer to use we always prefer to use uh, this uh, meta heuristic approaches. Right? I hope it is clear. So, when we have to use meta heuristics, under this meta heuristic, you might have heard about different kind of nature inspired or bio inspired algorithms like GA genetic algorithm particles form optimization artificial bee colony and um, so bat algorithm and the spider monkey and even you may go the genetic algorithm there is a DE algorithm differential evaluation and um, there are so many algorithms are there in the recent day used some wheel optimization and so many uh, shuffle frog uh, 
shuffle leapfrog algorithm there are so many varieties of algorithms are there so every algorithm have their own style their own style of searching the solution understood the only the this meta heuristic will differ the search strategy so they differ in the only the search strategy okay so everybody so the reason for this uh, is if you see and if you take uh, uh, ant colony so if you want to take ac ant colony up to my ant colony so they will take the the principles of the how the hands suppose if i keep the sugar at some place how it is identifying the sugar and it is how it is shifting the sugars uh, to these their uh, places by using shortest path they will ideally choose the shortest path so how it is establishing the shortest path uh to identifying uh, uh so identifying the sugars or some it's called uh, what you call uh, prey you will call some prey usually prey or so so there are ants suppose if I'm, if I'm trying to map with respect to the problem there are certain ants because everybody knows about ants there are some ants okay there are some ants so you are some something uh, you are sugar or is sugar is here right your sugar is here isn't it so what this does so one ant will go like this so one ant will go like this here so one ant will go like this and one ant will go like this they form one ant so every ant will have their own way to search the solution the here yeah, the the sugar the sugar is i my, my solution this is my solution so i'm trying with respect to my problem I want to reach the solution. This is my best solution. Okay. To reach this solution, how this ant is falling? Okay. So one ant is has found that this was the shortest distance. Once it comes to know that, how it will come to know? So when it is interacting with others, it will come to know. Yes, mine is shortest distance. I came with the shortest distance. Otherwise, they don't know, right? So then, what that does? They will deposit the pheromone on this, and the other ants will follow the path in which the maximum pheromone was deposited. Okay, the maximum pheromone was deposited. So ideally, at the last, ideally last. So all the ants will follow same route for transferring the sugar to their nest, their own places. If you see, so the ants are representing my initial are candidate solutions so this is my optimal solution how i am reaching this optimal solution from my initial solutions so this is uh, uh, taken the inspiration from the ants and they have developed some mathematical model and that's called ant colony optimization so if you see everything is inspired from some certain natural activity if you see uh, ant colony how they are collecting they are forming the shortest path to transfer the sugar from or some uh, uh, whatever it is some parts if you keep the biscuits or whatever you keep so to how they are transferring the shifting that particular item to their own places so they might have used naturally by birth by, by god given gift they have some strategy in that so what people does some people observe this fantastic capability of this available in the nature and they are trying to draw the equivalent mathematical model and these models are helpful in solving so many hard problems and similarly bats so what the bats algorithm does the bats they will identify the object with the echo location and all this stuff so maybe this will come later this part is later so if you see now i uh, just now made it clear that what is the uh, the difference between the conventional uh, to the, with respect to the meta heuristic where the conventionals are useful so where the meta heuristic algorithms are useful when there is a hard problem so one of the hard problem we discussed just now is a rule generation right so how can we uh, generate the rules with help of these 
algorithms. So what are the things we have to keep in mind when you want to solve the optim uh, hard problems with the help of the any nature or bio inspired algorithm or swarm intelligence approaches. So what are the things you have to keep in mind how you have to tackle the problem. See there are oh, there is uh, only the rule generation is process is not hard there are so many other hard problems also there. There is only uh, one problem I'm not talking, there are, but here I'm talking only one, one of the such problem is the rule generation problem. But this is not the only hard problem. There are so many hard problems are there. For all the hard problems, you can make use of this. But as long as you customize your, uh, your, your, your try, you customize your code, I mean, you customize your algorithm, you are trying to modify your algorithm, you are trying to encode your such that your uh, your problem is fit into that model. So you have to carefully uh, customize or carefully encode your problem in such a way that your that is exactly fit into your the uh, the nature inspired models. Okay, it, it can take either genetic algorithm or PS or ABC. Understood? So so before we move on to the how we can uh, generate the rules with the help of the one of the existing famous algorithm is called a spider monkey everybody knows so this is spider monkeys okay so everybody knows of the monkeys how they are searching for the food prey so based on the uh, the searching strategy of this uh, these monkeys they will usually uh, roam in the groups and they will uh, how they are searching for a food so be, uh, based on this uh, there was an uh, Indian author, it's a Bansal, I think J.C. Bansal. Some Bansal is from South Asian University and is from Indian author. He has generated, uh, he, has prop he has created that model and he has created this algorithm, spider monkey algorithm. So how can we make use of this particular algorithm for uh, addressing one of the hard problem is called uh, the rule generation process. Understood? So we will discuss about any doubts so far. If you have any doubts, you can. So why we are I slowly build a, um, uh, what you call the knowledge base. So we started with the uh, conventional classifier, then we moved to the rule-based classifier. What are the issues? What are the conventional techniques? Why we are using the uh, nature-inspired algorithms or uh, bio-inspired algorithms? So in that we picked up one spider monkey, and now we are going to solve with the help of this uh, this rule mining task let's see it's very interesting how we can make use of it any doubt so far guys any doubts no Okay. Yes. So let us study about how we can make use of this spider monkey. Uh, the base paper you can found from this. Yes, J.C. Bansal is the name. So the, this is a base paper for the algorithm, spider monkey optimization algorithm, which has been proposed by these three authors. And uh, uh, J.C. Bansal is an, oh, is an Indian author, OK, I think. So this is a, a base paper related to my topic. Um, how we can make use of the spider monkey algorithm for rule mining. So this is my uh, uh, research work where I carried out this uh, spider monkey I used for the extracting the rules for the the uh, diabetes classification we have taken diabetes data set which is publicly available in the uci machine learning repository so now maybe it's not available now i think they have removed it so so we have made use of the data set and uh, and also the spider monkey algorithm for the classify generation of the classification rules let's see 
how we have generated the rules okay so if i want to generate the rules first thing what i have to do know that first and important thing that so first you have to divide your data set so this is even for the conventional is basic The first you divide your data set into training and testing. Right. Now, how will a rule look like if then if if so, so and so condition is meeting, then will have consequent part in the consequent part after the classification rule what could be the classification rule so what will be there in the consequent part in a classification rule can anybody I'm talking I'm interested in what could be there here Hmm? What could be the, the expected information at the consequent part of your classification rule, any classification rule? How it is going to serve you? I mean, yes? No. Okay, it's uh, the class information. Is really it is in it the class information so what is this antecedent part so we will come to the antecedent part usually we will have set of features and the conditions we will talk about it. something like if I will write one some example if body mass index is greater than or equal to 25 and bp is above 150 and your ancestor hereditary is s status is s and um, something like this then then diabetes positive or something diabetes is equal to yes something like this if a sample classification rule if you see in the sample classification rule that's what we generated with the help of decision tree Okay, so this is an antecedent part, and this is a consequent part, right? Now, how can we generate classification rules? So we have to apply it cleverly. Suppose if I fix this consequent part, if I fix this part, I can generate this. On the data I can generate the the logic from the data the ideally which is maximizing certain criterion function so how can I fix it so one thing we can know that we can generate we can generate the positive class rules from the positive class data and we can generate negative class rules from negative class data. If I combine, then this will be form a rule set. Do you agree with me or not? 
so if i want to generate the positive class rules so you have to given your positive class data set as a input and if i want to generate the negative class rules i have to generate the rules from the negative class data so hence so once i get to training and splitting then you have to divide at the class level so you have to divide the positive class training data in the negative class training data and the rules which are being generated from this it will represent the positive class the rules which are being generated will represent the, the negative class isn't it and of course and it will be easy you know that if any rule is being generated from this positive class data its consequent part is fixed because we know that any rule is being generated from positive class data should belongs to the positive class should represent the positive class hence the consequent part of your if part will be fixed so the class is positive this is fixed if you are generating from the positive class so it's, this is fixed as a positive class if you are generating a rule from the negative class this is fixed as a negative class the class information is negative class any doubts how we are so so once we divided uh, data sets if you see here in this figure i cleverly sh clearly shown so there is a negative class and a positive class data set this data set the training data set is partition into positive class and negative class and um, and the appropriate rules will be being generated the appropriate rules will be if it is the the rules were generated by L, L making use of the spider monkey or assemble oligarch the spider monkey optimization from the positive class it is called positive class rule if it is being generated from a negative class data set then it is being it's called a negative class rule so at the last when you combine the rules which are being generated from the positive class and negative class will be constitute the the whole rule set so if you see the every sm rule miner the the algorithm which you are going to use the generates a set of rules and evaluates its fitness the using training data set and chooses the best rule that corresponds to the maximum fitness the question is as i mentioned it will generate the rule then how do we know that this the rule which is being generated is the best one or not hence for any optimization technique there must be some criterion function or so there must be some objective function so like uh, if i if i discussing earlier so this f of x is equal to x square where f of x is a where f of x is equal to uh, x square i took an example there f of x is in a what we call it is an objective function it is an objective function what happened it? From where I discussed, okay, no problem. No, you do it. See, um, so these fitness functions which I'm talking right now, functions will evaluate quality of the solution. Means quality of the solution. If it is a maximization problem, if I always pick up the the one which is giving the the fit the 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 solution which is um, giving maximum value. If it is a minimization problem, the solution which is giving the minimum value is ideally picked up. Okay, so this is a way the place of the uh, role of the fitness function to identify the best rule because there can be multiple rules will be generated, and I just I want to confirm the the among all the the rules which are being generated i have to select only one rule and uh, for that uh, we have to use either uh, criterion function or objective function or fitness function usually 
the based on the uh, uh, suitable measure the kind of measure we are being selected uh, based on that we will uh, pose this problem as the minimization problem or the maximization problem okay so in our case we will see what is the criteria function we have chosen the criteria function we have chosen is here okay, this is called fitness function the fitness function we have defined as the is a combination of the geometric measure of the uh, average values of these geometric measures and uh, the MIR mean interpretable rate and the comprehensibility so where the comprehensibility will talks about the uh, the compactness of the rules how the usually we are uh, we are not interested in a rules which are too many too much lengthy but we should have uh, rules should be as compact as possible so hence to taken care by avoiding this generating of the longer rules or lengthy rules so we will take uh, the uh, one of the measure that will calculate the, the comprehensibility the length of the, the rule so the comprehensibility will be measured as a, the number of attributes in a rule ancillary part minus one by the the maximum number of attributes in a rule antecedent part so so this will measure that out of uh, eight attributes how many rules were there so like that we will calculate the rule uh, comprehensibility of your the rule right and uh, what is mir where with well, mir will talks about the range values okay if you because every attribute uh, every feature suppose if i want to define uh, something like this uh, rule if the bp is a less than one something 80 something something above given 100 if the bp values the blood pressure values between 100 and 150 so this is called a range it's called interval so this interval should also not too much large and not too much compact okay if it's too much compact it won't cover much values if it's too much large the interval gap is too much large it will cover too many values so you should ideally should not be too much compact and should should, should uh, too much short and should, too much long long so we have to pick up the ideal gap for this interval selection and uh, so that we can have a uh, end up with getting a good compact rules so that's why we have taken the consideration of this the interval rate too and other measures will talk about the what you call uh, the performance of the rule so how many tuples are being classified perfectly so that is done by the precision and recall this is the precision and recall will talks about the what you call uh, the positive class information in the it talks about the positive class uh, how uh, perfectly your uh, classification rules which are being generated from SMO is perfectly classified uh, 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 at what portion of the uh, uh, tuples are being satisfied your rule okay so this will be taken care by the uh, what you call uh, the number of matches and number of mismatches at all so this is cleverly handled by the the precision and recall so just i want to combine this precision and recall and to generate a common measure and we have took the either arithmetic mean or geometric mean so but you can take in the geometric mean or you can take arithmetic mean also because this is the combined it's a combined measure so we by looking at the what you call the performance of a given rule so we have considered considering the its performance in terms of precision and recall that will measure the performance of your rule how many number of tuples being uh, perfectly classified and how many number of uh, a tuple misclass misclassified and the other hand we also take in the consideration of the length of the rule and its intervals too so all together we have uh, uh, tagged all we combined all these three the measures and we uh, we have created a fitness function so now for a better fitness function you have to maximize this value when I want to maximize this value, you have to maximize the G major, the maximum value of G major. When you, when the fitness function will be maximum, when the G major is maximum, then MIR is maximum, and the consequent will is low. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to maximize the G major, and we are maximizing MIR, and we are minimizing the comprehensibility. We are looking for a, for which the solution you will have minimum comprehensibility and the maximum G major and MIR. In that case, definitely the fitness function is maximum. Hence, those kind of solutions I am interested in. Hence, so you will end up getting the good solutions that satisfy these three criteria. Maximum G major, maximum MIR, and maximum minimum comprehensibility. Right. So that's why we want to prefer 
a solution which will provide the maximum fitness. That's the first point. So once SM rule miner selects the rule, so once it generates the rule, it updates the, the training data by eliminating all the records covered by that rule. So what is saying that initially there are certain rules, initial certain data samples. A rule R1 is generated by SMO. SMO has generated this rule. Now out of this, this rule is satisfied, this tuple is satisfied, this tuple is satisfied, this is tuple, this is not satisfied, this is satisfied, this is satisfied. And so we have we have separated all the unsatisfied tuples from the data set. We will eliminate it. Okay. So this is so these two we separated and we create a new data set. We will constitute a new data set which are unsatisfied generated rule and then this data set we will make use for another round of SMO to generate the new rule R2 because we already know that the R1 is being satisfied by the following tuples it, it doesn't make any sense if you keep the, all those records in the, so you have to update your data set by eliminating or by separating all the samples which are unsatisfied that's what it means. So once SM rule miner selects the rule, it updates the training data set by eliminating or removing all the records covered by that rule or all the unsatisfied records. You can separate them also. Okay. Then this updated data set is being used to generate the, the next rule in the next iteration. So this process is repeated until there is some stopping criteria. So suppose I have to repeat this process when the, my partition will have a certain number of if, if the number of tuples in my partition will be for a certain threshold suppose if the 10 if it is below 10 10 samples so whenever you reach that the size of your data set the partition which falls below 10 you can stop your algorithm right the so finally the generator so this process you have to repeat for both the positive class and negative class and finally you have to combine all the rules which are generated from the positive and negative class to constitute the, the final rule set. Right? And if you take the every uh, bio-inspired algorithm or any nature-inspired algorithm, if you like its own parameters. So these parameters are called hyperparameters. So these are these parameters are varies from the data set to data set and problem to problem. The value of these parameters is not fixed. So this you have to fix. It's a problem specific. So what are the freely the freely uh, the free parameters the hyper parameters available in the spider monkey is we listed out I think in the table we kept it yes. So these are the five parameters we have to carefully fine tune in order to get the best results because. It is specific to the problem and specific to the data. Hence, you have to cleverly choose these values. Okay. We should not choose these values very randomly. So there is some systematic approach. This is called some sensitivity analysis. So I will elaborate what is the sensitive analysis. Rule. So what are those five parameters we have to take into consideration when I want to generate the rules from the, the given data set by using SMO? The SMO has following five parameters is called the perpetration rate and um, what is the maximum number of groups so if, because so this uh, spider monkeys will roam in a groups so what is the maximum number of groups should be allowed like that okay and the global leader limit so what if, so how many so usually you will have a the one leader the one leader for each local group and overall you will have one or two global leaders okay what is the uh, the global leader limit. So how many number of leaders you should allow in a global? But usually we will keep. So it means every the global leader usually we have. Uh, sometimes you may have the more than one global leader also. So how many number of global leaders are you are allowing? It's specific to the problem, and the local leader limit because uh, in the, during this process of searching for the prey, it may create the subgroups okay so every subgroup will have uh, its own local leader and 
again these local leaders will elect one global leader and this global leader one more so there are so many global leaders and local leaders among uh, these groups it's okay and what is the population size what is the the how many initially how many number of uh, what you call uh, what is the size of this uh, group okay what is the size of each and every group so there might be number of groups four so what is the size of each and every group okay so it's 20 like that so what is the size of every group and what is the number of local leaders uh, is allowed and how many number of global leaders are allowed and what is the maximum number of groups uh, you can permit for uh, searching of your solution for searching of solution and generating of the rules and uh, as we have done this process separate for both positive and negative class and we will have a separate values for the both positive and negative class so how we can generate this process is so first you take one parameter and what you can do that so just in the x axis you take particular parameter so we are taking perpetration rate so something like maximum groups so we want to take a second so just keep on changing this value and observe the what you call the the fitness average fitness value the average fitness value of this rules so you will for every rule you will for every rule uh, you will generate the fitness rate right? so you have to find the the fitness value so as we are trying to find the maximum fitness value at which point of time for which value of maximum group you will have a maximum fitness value so that value will be ideally the best value for your maximum groups so this process you have to repeat for each and every uh, each, uh, each and every the uh, hyper parameter and uh, you can fine tune this hyperparameter well this process is called a sensitivity analysis so when you carry out this sensitivity analysis this is a, the, uh, my own research and this is a, the values we have plotted on the um, in the performance plots in the plots and the same values we kept put in a table format too and again if you see our performance what you called everything is a free so if you see if in the fitness function here is so i have used some weight factors the so w3 w4 w5 so this weight factors will decide for which you are giving more weightage the which measure you are we giving the more weightage okay and again we will use some greedy approach first i will give some value to the uh, w3 then i will look for the value w4 and w5 okay so ideally w3 plus w4 plus w5 usually will uh, equal to the 5 one and um, again we will have a w1 w2 in a geometric measure and we have total five weights and uh, and by using greedy approaches we have fine tuned the values for these weights too for my problem so these are weights we observed okay so so once we fine tuned uh, so we can experiment our proposed algorithm by the spider monkey against the tenfold cross validation so once we done the uh, tenfold cross validation so we can carry out the number of rules uh, i think everyone knows about tenfold cross validation so so if there is a data set so this data set is being split into 10 parts equal parts this is one fold one this is one one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so ten equal parts in the fold one in the iteration one or uh, this is called fold one will make the first as a testing the first fold as a testing and remaining nine as a training this is called fold one in the fold two you are making second fold as a testing and remaining nine as a training one second Uh, to see in the tenfold cross validation, so you will have a, the fold one, you will have one set of uh, performance value. In the fold two, you will have another 
so the fourth so at the last you will make it average of all this so this is called how the, the 10 fc is called 10 whole class validation so this process we carried out and uh, and what we got is the tremendous results in various other areas so this process we have so this is 10 folds and maybe i did it some space comes i couldn't put the, put the results of 10 fold and if you see these are the rules for being generated in each and every fold and uh, the performance is uh, for so we found the accuracy in terms of accuracy sensitivity and specificity and we found that each and every fold we found the accuracy sensitivity and specificity and also we also got the the number of rules because the size of the we should want to get a compact as well as the the minimum uh, minimalistic rule set so we ideally interested in that too also so what is the uh, number of rules were being generated and the uh, main rule length, on an average what is the length of your rules 1.5 means uh, it's how do you get it the number of rules total by total number of rules by total number of and uh, num number of features in your antecedent part by total number of rules. so that way we can get it okay if you see here there are uh, in this case if you take this is one two three four five six there are six rules the six uh, six features in antecedent part out of that only four rules so six by four is equal one point five that's the main rule that way we calculated and uh, so we presented our we compared with the state of the art techniques like uh, we discussed in the very beginning uh, for what are the standard approaches the decision tree based approaches by using gene index and uh, entropy based gain ratio uh, and uh, information gain and gain ratio all these are based are standard approaches for uh, called uh, uh, for generating of the rules but usually it takes long time so this id3 c4.5 card will talks will be a uh, will be internally used whatever i discussed genie and uh, what you call uh, car, uh, genie information gain and gain ratio will be used in this following algorithm id3 and c4.5 card algorithm and um, hence we compared our proposed model against with this and um, in terms of the the rule set size how many number of on an average how many number of rules were generated in terms of accuracy and sensitivity specificity and uh, you can observe those rules and uh, of course we we had compared with the uh, the but this proposed model with a the similar uh, approaches like where we have used a, a different algorithm for a similar task the different algorithms for a similar task okay see again it is got to go to, but thing is the main thing is this this is real i forgot to mention the main thing in this is how we are trying to map how we are generating the rules nobody asked i think nobody asked the question how we are generating the rules how the rules are generated So the tricky part is in encoding scheme. So in case of spider monkey, in spider monkey algorithm, the each spider monkey is nothing but a rule. The, this is not the best rule, there are each rule. At the last, these spider monkey, there are initially, there are so many spider monkeys. The, each monkey is a rule one, this is rule one, rule two, rule something. There are some rules. I don't know which rule is good among all the which rule is good it may undergo some changes this rule under may go some changes during this uh, assemble algorithm at the last you will have after the changes you will have uh, the best rule then how do we represent how can we represent a spider monkey for your problem so it means a spider monkey is not a rule so this is called a encoding scheme let us see about that I think I forgot to discuss that. So at the very beginning of the slides, I mentioned. Yes, it is. If you see, if you see how I encoded uh, the spider monkey. So each and every spider monkey is a rule. So how I represent the rule? So every rule, there are some, in every data set, every feature is there. Every feature is represented by a triple, triple eight. So then the one triple eight, the first part will be the, the flag, whether you should include your feature or not whether you should include your feature in your antecedent part or not and the second another two feature another two values will be the the minimum value of that feature and maximum value of that feature so like that i kept it and uh, if you see uh here the in our according to my data set there are total eight features like pregnancy count glucose and uh, dash to bed pressure uh, and the thickness and what's called insulin bmi and pedigree uh, 
uh, this pedigree will talk about the what is hereditary and all the stuff. So let us talk age, what is age, age factor. Okay. So, so how I have encoded? So for this prop, for this encoding scheme, what is the equivalent rule? So because in the pregnancy count, the what you call the flag spot is one. Hence, we can include the pregnancy count in my if part, in antecedent part. If the pregnancy count between three and ten, then where, what is the other feature? That diastolic bed pressure is between the 66 and 84. Then there is no other feature we, I, I need to include in the my if antecedent part because there is no more. There is no other feature is having uh, the flag value as one other than this pregnancy count and DBP. Hence, then clause is negative. This clause will be defined the based on the the data from which data you are being generated. Suppose if you are being generated this rule from positive class data, this is a positive. If it is generated from the negative class, then it is a then negative. Okay. This is the way we can generate the the rules. Uh, what you call uh, uh, from your data set. But at the last, uh, sometimes you may have the better performance when compared to the existing techniques that was proved over here. And uh, if you see here, the tricky part is encoding part here. Okay. If you see the results are and this paper we published in uh, elsewhere general in the composition biology medicine. Maybe I think now the impact factor is more than three. I think I didn't check in the recent times. Okay. See. See if the results are compared with the state of the art uh, decision tree based technique like ID3, C4, Pinewood Cart, are still it is being performed. And uh, even when I compare with the, uh, in the similar lines like uh, the other techniques, like uh, we have used the PSO, arti arti artificial bee colony, and genetic algorithm, uh, were used for similar lines. And still, uh, this uh, SM rule manner is better in terms of accuracy and sensitivity. Uh, we proved that. And, uh, this number if you see so if you see what are the rules if you observe here what are the rules if you see if you carefully observe the rules so these rules if you see the glucose is is uh, between 81 to 106 because I, I, I if i'm not a medical background person i don't know what is this uh, what is this thickness? What is DBB? We don't know some of it because if you don't have any basic knowledge about how do we know that how a, a non-medical person can interpret this? Of course, we can some extent we can interpret this rule, but still I more I want to the more interpretability. Now this is the knowledge. So the rules will represent the knowledge you extracted from the data. But I want to bring more again, the more interpretable to the rules, like the glucose is I, thickness is I blood pressure is high or low or medium that kind of wording i want to use i want embedded into my rules then you have to use some kind of the fuzzy logic you can bring some kind of fuzzy logic into this and you can generate the fuzzy rules okay so we can generate the crisp rules or the fuzzy 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 rules from the data set by incorporating the suitable uh, what you call the optimization technique or the meta heuristic approach okay this meta heuristics are very very important it has a plenty of application in any if you take any domain it has its application the only tricky part is how you are encoding how you are mapping your problem with respect to that respect to algorithm that matters a lot okay so that is the most of the people are suffering in that part and if you are able to crack that part you got uh, i think you have succeeded in this then you can get uh, you can try to solve any unpe any hard problem by making you have this meta heuristic approach. So the today class I discussed about I took one uh, hard problem, uh, so they call it rule mining task, and uh, I've shown my own experiments how we carried out with the help of spider monkey. Okay, so with this I'm closing. Uh, I'm stop my session, and if you have any more queries uh, related to this or any other problem in machine learning, you can free to ask. Guys, last 15 minutes are there for the questionnaire. I'll, I'll, uh, yes. Guys, do you have any idea? I mean, I think most of the people from computer science, and can you tell me any hard problem uh, you might have heard before? Have you heard any hard problems? Have you studied any hard problems in your part of your course? I think everybody studied algorithm course, I think. 
in algorithms, uh, you might have heard about the traveling salesman problem, PSP problem. Then if I increase the number of cities, how can you solve it using dynamic programming? How can you solve it using greedy approach? The greedy and dynamic programming are a traditional conventional techniques for the solving the optimization problem, hard optimization problem. But what is the disadvantage? It takes longer time to solve the problem. But I don't have that much time. What should I do? So you have to use the meta heuristics. So it means that for solving a TSP, you can use Spider Monkey as genetic algorithm. You can read the papers in the Google. Yes? Any more queries? Uh, there is no response. Participants, any queries, please uh, post it in a chat box or share it with us. If there are no queries, we'll go with a tea break. Guys, if you have any doubts, you can freely ask. Otherwise, I am dropping my email ID in the chat box and uh, you can send a mail at any point of time. My personal email. My official email ID is being posted in your chat box, and uh, if you require any assistance, you can. I mean, any doubts regarding this particular topic, you can approach me. Okay, so. okay sir. Uh, we'll share your email uh, mail ID in the WhatsApp group also with the participants, as well as I'll be sharing the sir uh, se sir session also in the WhatsApp group. Uh, if there are no queries, we'll go with a tea break. So thank you very much, sir. So thank you, sir. Ramalinga Swami, sir. Thank you okay, for the session. Thanks for the giving uh, me thank the you for, uh, Thank you for delivering the heuristic methods for uh, classification, uh, rule, rule uh, mining. Uh, thank you for the excellent uh, session, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I... I uh, request all the participants uh, to have a break. We'll uh, meet by 11.45. We'll have the second session after 11.45. Uh, we'll be sharing the attendance link.